Well, good morning. My name is Arthur. This is Frank. Um, we are going to talk about malicious HID devices. Uh, we will present what uh, is um, HID devices just after. So we are working for a CERT bank, a French bank. The agenda for today, uh, we will start with a short introduction uh, about HID device and specifically um, the presentation of three malicious devices. Um, we will spend some time on um, attacker possibilities. So Frank is doing blue team, so defense side. I'm on the red team, so the attacker side. Uh, and Frank will do some uh, practical hardware forensic on the malicious HID devices and what information can be extracted from a chip. And finally, some takeaway. <coughs> so um, first things first, what is an HID device? So HID stands for Human Interface Devices. And uh, basically, it's a device that uh, takes input from a user. And um, um, you know them as a keyboard or a mouse. This device um, can be subvert to be malicious. If you remember, six years ago, the um, NSA toolbox leak in press and um, one of them, uh, one of the implants uh, is the cotton mouth. Cotton mouth uh, is um, an uh, a HID implant uh, which uh, embed the two modules, the Trinity, uh, the multi-chip module uh, with an ARM9 um, flash memory and the FPGA. And the second module, the Euler Monkey, um, which is um, an um, uh, and a uh, radio frequencies module allowing to uh, remote control the, um, the, this, uh, this device. Um, t 10 years ago, this kind of modules cost about um, 20,000 euros uh, dollars for one. And uh, since four cheaper implants have been designed and um, now they uh, were um, available for anybody. So, um I think most of you have heard of Robert Ducky, probably the most well-known uh, HID devices on one of the first um, available on the internet. Uh, it's pretty simple. You plug uh, what seems like to be a USB key and it simulates a keyboard, so it executes a payload. Uh, the payload is stored on the on a SD card, so it's a compiled binary on the SD card, uh, FAT32, and that's all. That's pretty simple, just simulate the keyboard and launch the payload. Um, there is far more interesting devices, um, and this one, the WID injector, is really interesting because the W stands for Wi-Fi, and um, for the rubber key, you have only the USB connection. For this one, you have the USB connection, but you have also Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi as access point or as a client. So it means you can connect the on the, uh, on the board, or you can uh, tell the board to connect on an open Wi-Fi, for example. Um, it, um, it has many interesting features, such as um, a serial port, which can be used to exfiltrate data, so it's interesting. And um, it's pretty easy to hide the chips you have uh, some soldering skills. Uh, for example, we have weaponized this mouse, so the, um, basically the chip is inside the mouse, so the mouse is fully functional, but uh, it can also simulate a keyboard and uh, launch some payload. <coughs> so it's a really, really interesting um, device, so we created this one for uh, demonstration purpose at the bank. And the last one is the USB Ninja. It's uh, the most recent, I think. Um, the interesting feature is that you can uh, start the payload remotely thanks to um, by Bluetooth Low Energy. So that's an interesting feature. So you can be away from your target. You just click on your phone and the payload is executed. Um, the most complicated part is that if you want to store payload on the cable, it looks like a cable function, fully functional cable, uh, you have to recompile an Arduino uh, program and upload it on the board. So it's a little uh, expensive 
for what is it, but uh, the form factor is very interesting. So the attacker's perspective with this kind of device, uh, maybe some of you have seen Mr. Robot. Um, during the season one, uh, they want to infiltrate, I think it's um, a prison, a jail. And um, Marlin drops uh, many USB key on parking. And the USB key or HID devices, uh, which, uh, use, uh, which start to payload to gain a remote access. So you have many ways to do it. The most simple way and probably the most used by malware, actually, is to start PowerShell. So you just type Windows Air, open the execute uh, prompt, and you tap this line, and you have remote access to the computer. So the user will see it, but if it's done uh, quickly enough, it will be almost invisible. So it's really interesting. That's one opportunity. Uh, I think most EDR product will catch this line. But you can do uh, some signals such as uh, use lulbins, so execute a legitimate Windows binary to download uh, a program, by example, certutils or bitsadmin. Or you can drop embedded files in the payload, execute it, set persistence. You can do what you want. Uh, another option, I talked about it uh, with the red cactus, is that you have a serial port. So on Windows 10, serial ports are automatically uh, linked to a COM port, so you can talk with a COM port in PowerShell. So it's pretty simple. You write a simple payload. You read and encode the file you want to exfiltrate in BAS64. And yeah, dirty payload, but you can iterate through all available COM ports and try to write the BAS64 chunk on all ports. There will be the good one, and normally you will be able to exfiltrate data. Um, but you still need to uh, get access to the weaponized object to get the file back. So if you are in the Wi-Fi range, it's OK. You can just exfiltrate by Wi-Fi. Maybe you will need uh, to get the device back. It really depends on the context. So I will let uh, Frank talk about some forensics of uh, what we have done with the mouse. Now on the <laughs> blue team side, um, what how under um, an incident related with a malicious HD device? Um, all start with an alert. Somehow an alert is raised. Um, maybe it's uh, your DLP uh, system, uh, or your event management tool, or a user that, that reaches you because uh, he spots a suspicious behavior on, on his computers. So you um, directly start your basic forensic hires. Um, so you collect uh, the targeted devices, you uh, dump the data, you make your timeline, you run your tools, your, your lovely tools. Uh, you extract uh, indicator of compromise, and uh, you give them to your threat hunting team, and uh, you hunt on the networks to uh, see if there is uh, other related device in this attack. And uh, you repeat the process, basic. <clears throat> okay, now, um, as you may know, um, Windows is, lot, is, lot, is uh, full of uh, useful in the artifacts. Um, for our perspective, um, when we analyze uh, this kind of incidents, we uh, always um, pass through a USB a user review. And um, in our case, um, we thought that at um, 50, 46, 46 um, and um, an USB device is, uh, is connected. And uh, at the uh, exact same time, uh, you can see, um, at the exact same time, you, uh, you can see that there is a other um, HID device connected. Uh, so uh, we have uh, the mouse here, and uh, at the same time, we can see you have uh, serial devices with another uh, VID, PID uh, in notification uh, and uh, a USB hub. And uh, this must uh, raise an alert uh, during your process. <coughs> and uh, by the way, if you want to uh, know all about the IMCache Hive, uh, you definitely want to read uh, the paper written by Blanche. She's here today. Um, so, 
when we review uh, our timeline, um, we, we see uh, within the, that um, USB devices uh, were connected. And um, when we review the Windows event log, um, two specific uh, Windows event log uh, were, be, were really useful. Uh, for us, so the first one is the event ID uh, 225, uh, which uh, means that uh, your USB device cannot be removed <coughs> because uh, it's currently used by uh, the listed process uh, in our case PowerShell, and a make a link to the specific uh, device that can be uh, not removed. And uh, in our case, remember, slide uh, just above the suspicious VADP ID. So um, you definitely want to review uh, if uh, any event ID related to uh, PowerShell is, uh, is present. And uh, reviewing the event log uh, 600, uh, it shows us a command line run on the computers with an encoded payload. Uh, it's uh, base 64 enco en encoding, so uh, it's quite easy to decode. And um, when you decode it, uh, you can see uh, what the uh, attackers uh, want to, uh, to target. So uh, in our case, we learned the attackers try to exfiltrate the content of a specific file through a serial port. So at this moment, we know that a um, USB key, a USB device uh, was used. Uh, to launch a potential payload to exfiltrate data, okay? So uh, we don't panic, of course. Uh, we can, uh, we assume we can uh, retrieve the uh, USB uh, device and know what to do uh, for the analysis of this device. The basic rule, okay? The basic rule, do not connect a USB device untrusted on your computer. <laughs> Uh, I know it's a kind of classic rule, but uh, it can happen even to the best of the best. And uh, I can hear some of you in the room saying, uh, yeah, blah, 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 I have a Mac or Linux, I'm secure, booyah, okay. But uh, what if you may be able to connect the USB killer, okay, this lovely USB device? Um, will discharge about 200 volts through USB uh, on your device, <coughs> and uh, this could be uh, uh, fatal for your lovely computer. Uh, or you may be able to connect a USB device like the proof of concept, Mr. Self Destruct from Mike Groover, uh, that activates a 5 volt payloads, and uh, in the best case, really is, uh, some guises or explode. <coughs> so the basic process in uh, such case, you have to do some um, external and internal inspection to determine if there is a storage available for this uh, to, to analyze this. If uh, you have X-ray, perfect. But um, at some time, we have to uh, tear down the, the device. Okay. And uh, if there is data to dump and to analyze, uh, you, 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 you have a great chance to have to, uh, to open the device. The simple case, robot a key. Uh, okay, you open the frame, you extract the SD card, you dump the data, you use your favorite tools to uh, analyze it. There is also a tool already available. Yeah, um, just precision, the tools are used to uh, reverse the payload because payload is a binary. So the tools reverse the payload, but uh, be careful about the keyboard layout because uh, as it simulates uh, a keyboard, basically, um, we use a French keyboard, but by default, payload are for the US keyboard, so it doesn't work. It types poser shell, uh, doesn't work very well. And uh, there, if you have to reverse one of these, be careful about the layout. It could be a source of uh, error problem. And uh, in this case, uh, easy process, well played, finish, end of case. But <coughs> in our case, the weed injector was hidden inside a mouse. And um, the component notification shows an uh, Atmega Arduino-like controller, microcontroller, and a Wi-Fi module. Um, 
we see here uh, on the other side uh, a Wi-Fi uh, Wi module with a shield, okay? So um, we have to turn on all the things, so you put off the shield and uh, you found just under uh, the ESP uh, module, microcontroller, and uh, just uh, aside uh, a flash memory. Our goal is to find the sync data for analysis, so we can assume in this, uh, mem in, in this chip we can uh, find uh, data that could be interesting. So let's try to dump this flash memory. Uh, so mm, the basic process, we unsolder uh, the chip to avoid any potential interference. On this kind of um, cir uh, circuit, uh, there is a little chance for interference, but uh, if you are dealing with a, 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 a circuit like a, a router, uh, you, you can have problem to dump directly on the, on the PCB. And um, you sol solder it back on the breakout board to uh, access uh, more easily uh, on the, uh, to, to, to the pin. Uh, this is uh, an uh, SPE pin, uh, so uh, you, uh, you, you connect uh, on, this, uh, on this pin and uh, you invoke the Holy uh, Spirit of Electronics and uh, we'll see if it works. <coughs> Our chip is supported by FlashWorm. FlashWorm is a kind of automated extraction tool where it, uh, it supports a lot of um, flash, uh, flash memory and uh, basically uh, it talks to the chip for you and extracts the data uh, if uh, you have uh, the connection uh, in, the, in the right way. Uh, so uh, you use your, the best tool of forensic strings to test if your data is readable. Uh, Binwalk gave us no interesting result. Bin, Binwalk is a tool uh, used uh, to uh, analyze the um, dump of this kind of chip or exotic hardware, but uh, in our case, uh, no interesting data is, um, is given. Um, data seems readable. If the target chip um, <coughs> were not, uh, was not readable, um, you can use a tool like uh, Hedgebus. Uh, with uh, such tool, um, the, we end the data sheet, of course. Uh, you could talk to the, to the chip with the supported command to read the data. Okay, so uh, you see here, right here the command supported by the chip to read the data. Uh, don't, with uh, <coughs> the Edrabus, you can uh, specify the, which data to send to the, to the chip and uh, check the, the, the returns. And uh, you can uh, script it to, to read all the data. Um, this chip uh, uses uh, SPFFS for uh, SPI flash file system. It's used to manage file storage. Um, at the moment, we are not able to fully understand it. Uh, we are working on it. But uh, we are able to extract the Wi-Fi config configuration uh, with some interesting intel, um, two partial payloads, and uh, some intel about the attackers, giving us a great information uh, if there is uh, any OSINT uh, fail uh, on the attacker side. You can see <coughs> our lovely incident creator here. So, um, some slide above, uh, we learned that the attackers try to exfiltrate the content of a JPEG file through the serial port. And uh, after analysis, um, 100, uh, 100 of uh, chunk data with uh, some uh, grep, grep kung fu and uh, with a bite of luck, uh, we were able to uh, recover the stolen data, which is, uh, in this case, uh, the logo of uh, our team. Now, um, if we speak about uh, USB Ninja, um, if uh, we keep the, the same process, somehow your forensic analysis leads you to forensic this device, but in this case, it could be more complicated to access to the hardware. Uh, basic rules, tear down all the things again. So, uh, we, uh, this one is quite tricky. We need to bring out the uh, big guns and uh, you uh, need to open it to access to the internals, try to dump the microcontroller for that analysis and do the same thing for the Bluetooth modules. And uh, we are still going on, um, on this one, so uh, stay tuned. So <coughs> as a few takeaways, uh, as you will see uh, from the keynote yesterday and of today, uh, there is a lot to be done in the forensics field. And uh, there is a 
this kind of implant is no longer reserved to the national state sponsor attackers. And uh, the key to success is equipment and practice, practice, practice. You have to fail, you have to learn, you have to repeat. Uh, thank you for your attention, and uh, if you are interested or not, you can uh, reach us to uh, speak about the, the mouse. We can uh, make some demo if you want, so uh, thank you.